all right you are still watching ways now today marks the feast of saint josephine bakhita a sudanese woman who was sold into slavery abused but later freed to, together with a uh, coat net and the uh, talitha com network Caritas will host an online marathon of prayers on this day or this year's theme, Journeying in Dignity, which um, calls us to journey in dignity against human trafficking by keeping a horizon of the dignity of every person and um, leaving no one behind. This day of prayer um, invites us all to explore the world of trafficking and the suffering it inflicts on millions of people. It is an opportunity to learn about what trafficking means and explore its material, mental and spiritual impact on individuals and societies to take that first step in the fight against human trafficking. Ha. I've watched some kinds of movies yeah. and when these when like like literally before your eyes you just you know there are voluntary mm -hmm. trafficking mm -hmm. that you are the one that trafficked yourself true the one that is involuntary like you just from yeah, nowhere to pay off pay off the next yeah. day you are being trafficked i've seen very very horrific movies around mm -hmm. these things like it is scary nothing beats somebody just you know stripping of your dignity taking away your true. freedom it is very very painful to experience and to watch mm. very mm. sad you know um i had um i have a lawyer friend who told me that so she runs a restaurant and she said one of the reasons why she does not discriminate against beggars is because even though there are some that are not genuine some have genuine stories so she told me about a, uh, a little girl 13 years old who came to beg her for money to go to school so in the process she started asking her why are you begging why are you not in school so she said she does not know who her parents are. She's living with her grandma. So just to cut the story short, she started doing her investigation and she realized that this girl was kidnapped at some point, right? Brought to Lagos. Her parents think she's dead. Ooh. So when she got in touch with her parents, they said they've buried her, that she's it's not possible she's alive. So you know that so even in our own environment, these things are happening. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. real. It's and you would actually think this should be a thing of the past, considering how evolved we are. It's even but worse now. It's worse. It's, it's it, worse now. It is worse. You see, it's let me come to you. Your thoughts on human trafficking, then we'll take your story. Okay, my talk, <laughs> my, my take on this is that um, we have seen women and children being trafficked in the past basically but now we also experience men being trafficked as well i saw a, a story of a, a little girl who was actually trafficked um, by her family her immediate family she was sold into uh, early marriage basically that's another aspect of human trafficking you know and we've also had other stories of this is we are stories now this is not something that happened in the past is currently happening currently in the world mm. and we also have stories of individuals who have been you know taking it to the they're taking it to another level uh which has to do with the cyber space mm. now the cyber space we have people being auctioned yeah. on online basically so that it has it has escalated and we just need to keep crying for these individuals and for the people who are involved in this to actually change their mind ah. God help us. <laughs> All right, Isi, quickly your story, then um, I'll come to you, Glory. Okay, my story, I, I had to look for something that was good about Nigeria, basically, you know. So I picked the story, which is like a bound to my soul, and it says, um, the, the headline says, fuel, scarce, fuel scarcity uh, to, fuel, fuel scarcity across Nigeria to reduce from next week. Hopefully, I'm looking forward to this actually happening in Nigeria because we've had a lot of bad stories coming out of the the country from the north, the south, basically ranging from different perspectives. And this was promised by the um, national uh, Nigerian Na uh, National Petroleum Company, and we are hoping that if you saw shortage, will come to an end. And this began, you know, the first shortage actually started in uh, 2022, July, and it's been on for about seven months now currently. 
up running and if it was a baby, that baby would be, you know, would be walking or crawling basically. So we are looking forward to a situation whereby Nigerians can actually, you know, hear the sign of relief from the burden that they've been going through for the past few months, which has to do with different um, terms of uh, us. We've, we've practically queued for practically everything that you can think about, even down to our legal tender, hmm. basically. So we are looking forward to a bit of relief from the stress that we've been going through. Thank you. We are praying for that. <laughs> Let me hear your story. My story. Nigerian singer Anthony Ebuka Victor, known professionally as Victory, says he will be taking a two month break from music after undergoing his third and final surgery. I think he had an accident, if I'm not mistaken, some, um, sometime around 2021. But then, particularly, this resonates with me personally because sometime around 2020, I also had an accident. And I will say it's by God's grace that I came out of that accident unhurt. Um, but you know i want to wish him quick recovery and back to the scene of music and also just to use this opportunity um, um emotions are high people are angry drivers are angry people are taking their um, frustrations on the road so let's be very mindful and let's let's be very um responsible while driving because even uh, about aside the accident on its own the mental effect yeah. of it i remember then i could not sit on the front seat of a vehicle because of the mental aspect of it so i just wish him quick recovery mm. Mm. wow it is well it is well indeed <laughs> okay so the headline of my story is um imf ask um federal government cbn to extend cash swap deadline and then um it says in light of the hardship caused by disruptions to trade and making payments due to the pub making payments by the public in spite of measures introduced by the cbn to mitigate against these challenges in the banknote swap swap process the imf encourages the cbn to consider extending the deadline should the problems persist over the next few days mm. i don't know i mean you this was today Yesterday, Supreme Court, you know, gave a mandate and it just begs the question. I mean, can we not do things right in this country? <laughs> it is where. <laughs> so actually, I was going to take the Supreme Court, you mm. know, um, they have actually come out uh, hours, you know, to, what's it called, to halt mm. this February 10th deadline for the old naira 200 500 and 1000 naira notes mm. right to cease being used as legal tender and again this is coming off of the back of the governors um, kaduna kogi and zamfara state that had in a motion filed by their lawyer prayed that the supreme court to stop cbn you know um the naira redesign policy mm. so now there's a pulse we don't know what is going to go on but earlier today President Muhammadu Buhari met with um, the CBN governor mm -hmm. in Aso Rock, right? Um, hopefully, hopefully, um, the meeting, because this meeting is happening like hours after the Federal Executive Council yeah. and the Supreme Court yeah. judgment and all of that. So hopefully, we will see the outcome of this. I have a bit of mixed feeling about this halt right i have a mixed feeling about it because mm. in on one hand i am actually looking forward to the system easing it easing yeah. off so that the tension would you know, and the, yeah. the anger dies down on another hand i'm just looking at the implications of mm. flooding our uh what's it called our our streets again with a lot of cash yeah. how that would directly impact elections given that nigeria we know that money politics <laughs> plays yeah. a huge role in our electoral True. process mm. right so i mean tomorrow we're going to be discussing a, another interesting story that came up today anek saying that uh, mc oluwama and his people mm -hmm. will be the ones conveying our, our i thought that our, was a joke it's not a joke <laughs> <laughs> i have to hear what nigerians are saying about it but hey that's not the oh. you, see, you see, these are all the things that are giving us <laughs> mental health stress. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing, I have, a, I have this group on WhatsApp, and um, 
you know, we banter and someone had said something, you know, if, of course, this kind of thing, people would send forwarded messages mm -hmm. and all that. And I remember that everybody just, it was like, open gates. Everybody just started to walk in and I was like, okay, today is not a, no. Not the day. Today is not the day to talk about Nigeria. No, 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 no. Yeah. It cannot be today. We can't do this every day. Yeah. It just wears down on you. I said my mental head is no. And <laughs> I'm looking forward to Tochi telling me how, how to navigate, navigate how to oh. navigate Nigeria this, between, this session between, is for us I'm it, it, is. For me. it is I need to declutter my mind between really? now and Mark I'm praying let the election even come mm -hmm. and go mm -hmm. because I need to navigate my mental health I need <laughs> sanity because Nigeria you will not frustrate no, me no. we'll come back after the break I want to discuss my mental health <laughs> <laughs>